when I interviewed you the first time, it was only a few days after we'd lost Scott Hall. And as I interview you now or when this interview is released, it's pretty much going to be on the anniversary of his passing, so it'll be one year since. So I wanted to talk mm-hmm. about Scott Hall a bit. Um, and I suppose, can you give me some things that maybe people might not realise about Scott that made him a cut above other wrestlers and, and things like that? Obviously, he had the look when he dialed it in, when you talked to him and did the whole Scarface thing. But what else about Scott really made him a cut above other wrestlers as a performer? Man, he was super smart. I mean, I, I compare him to Jake, you know, and that's as high an honor to, as far as I'm concerned you can get. And I compare, they were kind of like, he was like that version of Jake, that, 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 that generation's Jake Roberts, like he could lay, I mean, the way the psychology of his matches, you know, was just brilliant and his selling. I mean, guy could be a baby face or a heel. People didn't really want to see him as a heel, you know, but he played it a lot, mm-hmm. you know, uh, you know, he would never really tell you what to do unless it was spot on. Like there was times like when I, I example, would be about me being as a manager, you know, overshadowing the boys. He told me, he goes, stop doing that. I go, dude. And again, I thought I knew. He told me less is more, you know, in the ring. No, you don't have to do 15 things. Do two. And, you know, so uh, when you think you're going too slow, slow down. Like the, those are just three things there that I would literally call him. And if he didn't answer the phone, I'd leave him a message. Hey, bro. Remember when you said less is more? Like they, it, it finally clicked. You know, you know, you think you're going too slow, slow down. You're only going boom, boom, boom. Like my favorite wrestling is storytelling with the big impact that goes through it. I appreciate a lot of the new wrestling that is more like video game wrestling. One bump after another, like one death crushing finishing bump into another, into another, into another small package. One, two, three, Mm -hmm. you know, I'm not as emotionally involved in that, you know, but I, I do totally respect the, the athleticism and they have been telling kind of cool stories with some matches like that, but they're not my favorite. I want the one that pisses me off and I'm starting to hate you for doing that to him or to her. Like when you MJF is the best heel in professional wrestling, he's a real heel. Like, he won't even put stuff up. Like, it was me and him together. He wouldn't put that picture up there. Mm. You know what I mean? He's not going to do it. He's going to live the gimmick. Very hard to get real heat today. He's got it. Mm. You know, the whole thing that the bloodline did, even those guys are all borderline baby faces like NWO was because they're so good. Mm. They're so fucking good. But Sammy is such the baby face. Bischoff, uh, in an interview, uh, compared his rise to fame like mine. And it was. It was against the NWO. I was a humongous baby face against a bunch of guys that were baby face heels. You know, because Kevin Scott taught me, like, you're not a baby face. You're not a heel. You're a superstar. It doesn't matter if they cheer you or boo you. They just got to do one or the other. Or they can be doing both at the same time. You know? Um, To me, like, Scott was one of the best storytellers. And if I could have helped him get sober back when he was working, can't even imagine the work he would have done. Because it was great. It was great when he was on his way, you know, to not being what he was at the end because he was drinking too much, you know. But, um, you know, it was it was tough. 
it was tough. You know, <laughs> I don't think anything bothered me that much as much as Dusty. It was like Dusty and Scott, like, too. More than my grandfather, my grandmother, you know, like those two guys were really close. Yeah, with um, Scott, I, I, you can tell me to just move on or whatever. But uh, what what was it with Scott that would? Because obviously you would try and help him, and he would uh, be doing very well for long periods of time, and there would be wobbles here and there. But what was sort of his triggers specifically? You no, know, I don't really know that, except for a lot of times he'd be by himself. And I think anyone who's an addict is by themselves. It's not a good, it's not a good combination. Yeah. And, uh, you know, although I finished off saying is that he has missed, he's, I mean, he lit the internet up, you know, like when he passed, wow. There was so many people who really cared about him, like loved him. Mm -hmm. And, uh, if he would have loved himself more, I think he'd probably still be around here. Absolutely. And uh, also one of the King uh, wind-up merchants on the road, as well as a sort of travel partner, I believe. <laughs> Is there any, like, a funny story to end on with Scott where, let's say you were traveling with him and he just knew how to push your buttons or wind you up or something like that? You know, he was never really like that. You know, not he wasn't a... He was a subtle dude, man. Mm. You know, Scott might not say... I'll give you an example. Like when he came in the house and he was, you know, now he's sober and uh, the lawyers for my program, I wanted to call it zero impact because there's really no impact in DDP yoga. And the lawyers say, you can't say that. You can't say zero impact because you're moving. So I couldn't think of, you know, like kick ass cardio, dramatically increase your flexibility, strengthen your core at a whole different level. I didn't have the ending. So for two hours, my team and I deliberated this in the, we call it the, uh, the sons of anarchy room. Cause a huge <laughs> table that we had and, uh, we couldn't, didn't come up with it. And the ideas that people came up with, they were lame. And I walked in the kitchen to grab something and Scotty pulls me over side. He goes, Hey, Dally. I don't want to step on anybody's toes or anything, but couldn't help but hear what you guys were talking about. He said, what about minimal joint impact? And I was like, oh, that's fucking perfect. Oh, my God. Like, it, it became a part of the four things. Mm. And that was Scott Hall because I didn't come up with it. Steve couldn't come up with it. Nobody did. But Scott Hall did. And he always had those nuggets. <laughs> Freaking, he could just be listening to some, tell, some guy tell a story and at some point. So I got his ass and I whooped his ass. And he would go, he'd kill you. <laughs> <laughs> he'd kill you. You know, like, like like he always had those like one liners that just burst out laughing, made you look kind of stupid, you know. You know, it's it's kind of like what he came up for. The best example is uh, bad times don't last, but bad guys do. Mm -hmm. You know, I can't remember the beginning part of that, but when he was getting ready for the Hall of Fame, and you got to remember. Those two guys going in the Hall of Fame was like me going in. Mm -hmm. If I never went in, which I knew they had eventually put me in there because of WCW. But if I never went in for this, to watch, to, to be the guy that helped both of those guys get sober, sober enough that where the company would trust them again. Like that's so huge. And to have been that and being able to uh, work it and to be there for that. And Scott telling me, Dally, I'm not going to say a lot for this Hall of Fame. He said, but here's my finish. And when he said the finish to me, I was like, brilliant. And of all the quotes you'll ever hear in someone's induction 
speech that will always be there. Mm. 